yeah, they, they should be walking down there now. Yeah. No problem. Tufts is now making their way to the dais. The locker room will be open until 8.39. Joining us on the dais now from Tufts, head coach Carla Bruby, student athletes Michaela North and Maura Folliard. We'll open with a statement from Coach Bruby and then take questions for the student athletes. Well, um, not the outcome we were hoping for. Um, I thought it was, uh, from my vantage point, uh, a great basketball game. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, the fans enjoyed it. Um, we're very, you know, we feel very fortunate to have to have played in in this game tonight. Um, and uh, you know, thanks to the the NCAA again for for having us into the city of Indianapolis. And um, it was an amazing amazing experience. Um, you know, I think my team battled. You know, we didn't give up. Um, made it a game in the fourth quarter by making plays and um, just playing tough basketball the way we have all season. Um, and then down the stretch, Thomas Moore made the, the big plays. They've got big time players and um, you know I think it was some of their so-called non-stars that, that really shined. Um, you know, Temple had a great game. You know, Kiernan had a great game, and um, 
you know, they were tough defensively, made everything really hard for us. And, um, but again, it, I think it was a, a hard fought battle and I'm really um, proud of my, my jumbos and, um, you know, thankful for this experience. Thanks, Coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes right down here. Pat Eaton, Rob, from the Associated Press. Michaela, the game seemed to be played at, at your pace. You held Moss to 414 shooting. Was it a matter of their defense or just not enough of your offense? Or what do you think was the difference? Um, yeah, I guess it was a combination of both. Our shots weren't falling. A lot of theirs were. Um, and they also out-rebounded us. Um, I think on the offensive end and defensive end. Um, so, I mean, they just got after it on both ends and um, things were working for them. Question down here in the front. Marvin Chambers, Houston Sun. Michaela, first half, you guys was going to your sets very easily. The second half, you guys seemed like through your offensive progress, it was difficult. What adjustment did Thomas and Moore make to make your offense stagnant? Um, I think they were just working really hard to make sure we didn't get open. Um, I guess they were denying uh, any passes inside, uh, making it hard for my guards to even look into me. Um, so they were making every shot difficult. Uh, and it was hard to yeah, get any shots off, and then they weren't really falling for us. So it made it hard to score. Question right back here. Uh, Evan Sales, the Tufts Daily. Do you think that the level of play that we saw in the first, first quarter was a level we needed to see throughout the whole game to win? Um, and what prevented that from happening? Was it foul trouble? Um, that were, did the team step up like you would have expected? Who's that question for? Uh, the student Michaela, you want to start that? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we came out with a lot of energy in the first quarter. Uh, I think we had a 17 to 11 lead. Uh, we would have liked to push that, uh, but they kind of kind of crawled their way back, kept scoring, um, couldn't really get a stop for a while, and they just go on runs. They're an emotional team, and uh, they had a huge fan base here cheering them on, and that's what they play off of. Um, so, I mean, just I think we needed to come out with that energy every quarter, um, but it didn't really seem like we did. I mean, in the third quarter, uh, we outscored them, I think, by point. Um, and I wish we could have kept up, the, kept up the energy for the entire game, but I guess that's not really what happened. Yeah, I agree. I think that our defense just needed to, um, you know, really box out. I think they're, them getting on the boards as much as they did really affected us, and they were easy to get. They were able to get easy second chance opportunities um, after we worked really hard to stop them the first time. So I think that made a big difference in the game. Question down here in the front. Uh, Maura, it was tied at. 49, Moss makes a steal and a layup, and they go on a 10-0 on a run. Were you guys out of energy at that point, or what happened in the last six and a half minutes there? I wouldn't say we were out of energy. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were in foul trouble, and I think that um, people's um, kind of attitude towards everything was kind of down, but we just needed to pick it up and look for um, a spark or anything like that, and, you know, it just shots were falling for them and not for us. Take a final question here for the student athletes in the front. Maura, as a senior, what has this NCAA tournament mean, mean to you, and what can you learn from and teach the youngest, you know, upper, underclassmen behind you? Yeah, this has been an absolutely amazing experience. Um, we can't thank the NCAA enough for everything they've done for us. You know, treating us like we're absolute queens. Um, I think for the underclassmen, it really gives them motivation to keep doing well in the tournament as time goes on. Um, and as a senior, just had to meet Emma Roberson, Nicole Brooks, Michelle Wu, had to give it, our, give it our all um, the entire tournament and just work as hard as we could um, so we could hopefully inspire underclassmen to keep doing the same in the years to come. Great. Thank you, ladies. They'll be available in the locker room until 839. We'll take questions for Coach Bruby. Oh. We'll start right here. Uh, Creighton Raps from Hero Sports. Coach, um, at uh, down, down the stretch, 
actually, actually, before I get that, the foul shooting, very, very disparate. They went 24 times. And you guys went seven. I mean, that almost seems like, I guess, uh, was it tightly called or just your thoughts on that? I mean, that's what the box score says. Yeah. Um, it was difficult. It was difficult. We, you know, we pride ourselves on our defense. Um, we play tough defense. We play aggressive defense. And um, when you're playing a great offensive team, you know, sometimes it's called tight. Sometimes it's not. Tonight it was pretty tight. Um, you know, having Melissa Baptista on the bench for most most of the game was was tough for us. She's a big um, she's a big piece of our team. Having Emma Roberson, you know, out with two fouls really early, you know, it's it's not easy. I thought I thought Michelle Wu and and Moore Foley, our two seniors, really stepped up in there um, in place of them and uh, made big plays for us. And um, so that's. That's who we are as well. You know, if someone's not having a good game, some, you know, someone's in foul trouble, someone else is going to step up. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, them making 17 free throws to our four free throws. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a big disparity, but, um, you know, those are probably a lot of fouls. <laughs> you know, um, it was called, it was called tight. Question down here in the front. Uh, Carla, they, they obviously had a big crowd, but you had, it seemed like a who's who of UConn people in mm -hmm. the audience. Gino and Rebecca, Sue Bird, uh, Svetlana was there, Renee Montgomery, I could go on and on, on. What did that mean to you to have yeah. all those It was awesome. Huskies? I mean, I didn't see him. I saw a few of them at the, at the end, you know, still cheering for us. Um, it means a lot. It means that, you know, once a family member, always a family member of the of the Yukon um, club, um, and uh, I'm, you know, so happy that they were able to come and 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 watch us play and and um, you know hopefully feel feel proud that that one of their their members has brought their their team to this to this stage and to the, you know championship. Um, you know, I'm I'm thankful to have them in the in the crowd. Um, I do think we had a, a pretty good crowd ourselves of, of Jumbo Nation, if you, if you saw them out there. And um, um, so it's, you know, I, I feel very, very thankful and fortunate for, for all of them being, being here. Question here in the middle. Thanks, Gordon Mann, D3 Hoops. Hi, mm -hmm. Carla. Um, Two-parter for you. Uh, Last year's score against them in the semifinals, almost exactly the same. So can you talk a little bit about, I know, different teams, different players, but talk a little bit about how this game year was different from last year? And uh, unrelated uh, second question, can you talk a little bit about why Abby Owings is so hard to defend? Yeah, I mean, I, d I do think it was a different game. Um, I think we took care of the ball a lot better than we did last year. Um, so we were, you know, I think, you know, Lauren Dillon did a, did a, did a great job. Um, you know, running, running our offense, um, taking care of the ball in the press, um, and then it was, um, you know, it's it's it was hard to to execute versus them. Like I said yesterday in the press conference, that's a very good defensive team. I don't think they they get enough credit for their defense because everybody talks about the 90 points. They talk about you know Sydney Moss and. Um, but Abby Owings makes them go, um, you know, got out into transition a bit. Um, she got to the rim on us. I'm not sure where our help defense was, but, um, you know, she's a, she's a dynamic player herself. Um, um, the, the two of them are just, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal players um, at any level. Um, but really, I thought it was their, their role players that really made the difference in, in this year's, in this year's game. Um, and yeah, I knew we needed to score more than 50 points to, to win, and it just, uh, it just didn't happen. Um, I actually thought that we could have defended a lot better, too. Um, we defended Moss well. She, you know, she missed some shots, but um, you know, way too many second chance opportunities for them, whether it be loose balls or, or offensive rebounds for them. Um, 
you know, I don't think we did a, as good a job putting a, a body on them as, as we had been doing. Um, but, you know, like I said, they made, the, they made the plays when they needed to. We have time for one final question. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Coach. Okay. The Thomas Moore locker room is open now. It'll close at 849. Tufts is still open until 839. On the dais now from Thomas Moore, head coach Jeff Hands, student athletes Nikki Kiernan, Abby Owings, and Sydney Moss. We'll take a statement from Coach Hands first, and then we will uh, take some questions for the student athletes. Uh, what a game. Uh, very good game. I don't know if it was entirely well played by either one of us, um, but to be on this stage and to be able to come out uh, with a hard-fought victory over a very good and well-coached team. Uh, just so proud of our players um, and the, the resilience that they showed when the game got tied late third quarter, early fourth, and uh, we were able to get a, a stop and a run out to get the lead, and just uh, we kept the momentum from there. And then uh, Madison Temple's big three uh, was just huge to put us up by seven and, and force them, uh, uh, Coach Bruby, to call a timeout. And, you know, we, we hung on and, and uh, made plays when we needed to. Questions for student athletes? We'll start right down here. Abby, six and a half minutes left. It's tied at 49. The game's being played at their pace. And then uh, Moss uh, gets a, a steal and a basket, and you guys go on a 10 0 run. What was the difference from that 49 on point out? Can you repeat that again? Sorry. <laughs> She's not paying attention. Sure, the game was tied at 49 right. with six and a half minutes left. Yeah. And then Moss gets a steal and, and a bucket. You guys go on a 10-0 run. What was the difference after, from in the last six and a half minutes of this game? Uh, I mean, that just created a lot of energy for us. Um, that bucket was huge. Um, and so it made a lot of good plays throughout the game. So it wasn't just that one. Um, and I think that with her making that basket, it, you know, it created a lot of open things for us you know, after that. So, um, I mean, she did a great job, and it, it just pushed the momentum forward. Question over here. Adam Turr with the Cincinnati Enquirer. Uh, you know, everybody coming to the game talks about your offense scoring 90-something points a game, but really that last six minutes it seemed like your defense took over. I think in that stretch they missed five straight shots. You forced three straight turnovers. Is there a point when you collectively realize, okay, offense isn't going to win us this game, we need to find other ways to win. And then how do you change, you know, maybe the emphasis of your style of play from one end to the other? Do you want to start that, Nikki? Yeah, I think um, our defense really, like, pushes our momentum. And, like, once we start getting stops and stuff, we start, like, all around playing a lot better. 
yeah, our defense definitely feeds into our offense. And now uh, we make good plays on defense, and our offensive game just comes from there. So, um, <laughs> I mean, obviously agreeing with them. Um, you know, I think we all just, you know, had that look in our eyes like, okay, it's time to, you know, buckle down and, and get stops on defense and, you know, make plays on offense for each other. And um, obviously we did that. So, Anything else for the student athletes? Move over here in the middle. Gordon Mann, D3 Hoops. Hi again, guys. Um, Sydney, four for 14 tonight, but you did a lot of other things, distributed the ball, rebounded. I noticed you went, dropped down in the post and defended on uh, North and Baptista for a couple of positions, uh, possessions. Can you talk a little bit about how you saw the game tonight? It looked like you were taking a little more of a, and I know you've been a distributor throughout the season, but a little more of a distributor tonight, not looking to score like last week when you, or two weeks ago when you had 29 points in about 15 minutes against Amherst. Um, I mean, my team was making plays, and I, you know, realized that, and I wasn't hitting shots. So um, I tried to find them if, if they came over and double teamed, or um, if I had missed a shot, you know, the possession before, try to try to get them open looks, and you know, they're they're knocking them down. Um, it wasn't really a, you know, obviously it's not just about me. Um, it's about the team, and um, obviously we, you know, did what we had to do to win. Question down here in the front. Pat, did you have a question? Actually, my question was very, very sim similar for, for Sydney, but you guys have balanced uh, scoring today. You have four players who average in, in, in double figures. Um, maybe, Ab Abby, you can, you can take, the, take this one. How do you guys not, um, uh, jealous is not the right word, but, but, but how do you feed off what Sydney does and, and, and not rely on her all the time? Um, she just creates a lot of energy for us. Um, we know that she's going to make big plays in big games. So for us, you know, it's our job to you know, get her the ball. But like tonight, if they're double teaming her or something like that, she's a great player and she's going to find us, I know, when we're open, um, but just like you saw tonight. Take a final question down here for the student athletes. Marvin Chambers, Houston Sun. Sydney, uh, you and Abby was working well in the first half, but it seemed like you guys starting to click in the second half when you was moved to the fourth position, do you think that helped you guys to really push um, the game over? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, Alexa Santa Maria, um, you know, kept hacking, kept fouling, and, um, you know, coach took her out, so I had to move down to the post to bring, you know, Olivia in. And, um, you know, like the game before and also all season, you know, I played a little bit of post, and you know, Abby knows how to feed me. And, you know, if they came in double teamed or, I didn't have the shot, kick it back out, and we just kind of ran through the offense. And um, I mean, we that's something we practice too. I mean, we do it all the time in practice, and um, we've been playing, you know, with each other for two years. So it kind of just clicked. We're going to take one more right here in the middle. Uh, Nikki, I know last year in the Final Four you were nervous. Tonight you played at All American, more or less to a standstill. Your rebounding was, you know, really impressive. Can you talk a little bit about how different this year felt for you? As compared to last year? Yeah, I was a lot less nervous this year. And then I think it helped a lot in practice. I go against Shelby Rupp, and she's pretty big, too. So I try and make her better, and then I feel like she makes me a lot better, too. Great. Thank you, ladies. They'll be available in the locker room again at, um, until 849. You guys can go back. You guys can. We'll take, continue with questions for Coach Hans, right down here. Coach Hans, you said yesterday that um, you thought if you got to 60 points, you'd be pretty good. Did you, did you tell your team to stop there? Or I mean, <laughs> I mean 63, it, it, it seemed like uh, you got just enough. Well, what did you say before about six, uh, 49? It was 49, six minutes and 49 seconds. It was 49, 49, right? Well, I was praying that we'd get to 60 at that point in time, to be honest with you, um, because we weren't shooting the basketball well. Um, you know, they had some momentum the last four or five minutes of the third quarter and at the beginning of the fourth. And uh, to be honest, I was about to take a timeout. And then we got that steal and run out. And, uh, you know, then we were able to make a few plays. And, and I thought our defense did a very good job of, of locking them down a little bit um, to, to stop their scoring. Question right here in the middle. 
know we talk about the four players who average double figures, and they they all four hit it tonight. But in a game, especially a game like this, this style of game, how important were the contributions of Olivia Huber, Alexa, Sam? You know, diving on the floor, making those hustle plays, and really defense and rebounding. You know, the little things that some shows up in the box score and some doesn't. But it seemed like in this kind of game, those players really made the difference for you. Yeah, I thought um, everybody that that got in helped in some way. You know, it wasn't maybe a offensive basket or an assist or something like that, but it was rebound. I mean, Olivia has eight or nine rebounds, um, eight rebounds, six of them defensive, two big offensive rebounds uh, on, on the night and, and a steal, a deflection, you know, and that's that's what those guys have done all year. Um, offensive firepower comes from the four, you know, Sid, Abby, Nikki, Madison, but it, it's a team and everybody's going to do what they need to do for help for us to be successful. Question down here in the front. Marvin Chambers, Houston Sun. Coach, uh, Abby started kind of rough um, in the first half. Um, what conversation did you have at halftime to settle down? Because of the second half, she really picked up that game. It was, uh, uh, you, don't, you don't know what I said. Um, I can't say it, cannot repeat. But uh, it was, and it was all of them. You know, I thought we made a lot of bad plays in the first half, especially the first quarter. Um, we, looked, we looked like we had not been here before. We looked like the, the stage was almost too big for us. And, and that's, that's the environment, you know, and, and, but we fought through it. Um, I thought when we were able, when we kind of had to go small, a little smaller, put Sid at the four, like you asked before, um, that we were able to spread the floor a little bit and start really attacking the basket and got to the free throw line. And, and that's those last two, three minutes of the uh, second quarter, we, we settled into what we needed to do. And then from, from then on, I thought we were pretty good. Um, we just missed a lot of shots in the third quarter. Couldn't get anything to fall, and but we, but we kept defending. I mean, even when it got tied, we, we when they tied it up there early in the fourth, we just kept defending, defending, making them grind, just like they were making us. And uh, you know, we we kept making those plays. Question in the back corner there on the left. Thank you, Lee Michelson, hoop feed. Coach, could you please give us your evaluation of the change to having the Division Two and Three championship games in conjunction with the Final Four, the Division One? You like it or not, and why? Love it. I'm not going to go with like it. I'm going to go with love it. Um, and it's, you know, I don't know if it'll happen again. I hope it does uh, because for whatever teams can get here, it's a great experience, you know, for them to be able to be on that stage in that environment. And I don't know what the attendance was. 6,400 people here to watch a Division Three women's basketball game is, is outstanding. And uh, for our, our kids, Toughs players to be able to experience that environment and everything that's happened all weekend long that they've been able to be a part of and, and be involved in. Um, there's nothing better. There's not a better feeling. And then, I mean, it's, I know it's easy for me to say now, but win or lose, uh, you know, because of um, just it, it's once in a lifetime for these guys, you know. And so I hope it can continue to be done. Um, but, you know, that's up to NCAA and WBCA. And, you know, if we can, it would be it would be great for whoever can make it. Now, the two-week layoff is difficult, okay? And I thought you saw a little little nervousness early with that part of it. But um, but that's that's basketball. I mean, that's it's something we had to do, and both teams were that way. You know, it wasn't like there was an op uh, advantage for somebody, Tufts over us or us over Tufts. Question right here. Now, obviously, the stage this year is a little bit different with all, you know, all the divisions here. But, you know, for you guys, this championship, you know, emotionally, what was different? What feels different than, you know, winning the second one as compared to the first one last year? It's, uh, it's sweet. It is sweet. Um, just to be able to have that target on your back all year long uh, through our non-conference schedule, through the NCAA tournament uh, of everybody. Because we're going to take everybody's best shot. We know that. And, and our, our players and our guys rose to the challenge every time, you know, and, and I thought that showed tonight when it got tied late and we were able to uh, get it, get on that run, you know, just that resilience, like I said, it, it's, it's big and every day in practice of competing against each other and knowing and, and looking forward to having an opportunity to get back there because you want to get back there. You know, there, there's outside pressure from everybody. I mean, honestly, we heard it all year long, get back to Indy, get back to Indy, you know, capital, semifinals. You know, everything's two hours. I mean, this is this this and, and capital were closer than any non-conference games we played all year long, and, and or any game period because of our conference the way it's set up. So, 
for that to happen and then our, our players to, to be able to do stuff, do what we did and handle every, all the outside because we don't talk about it. You know, we don't want it to happen. Um, we just want to work to get better, and, and they, they handle themselves very well. Taking a question right here in the middle. Coach, uh, so Moss finishes her career two-time tournament MVP, three-time consensus All-American leading scorer in the pack. You and I talked about you know, where you and I think she stands in all time. Now her career is over. I asked you yesterday to write this script for what her final game's over. Now that it's, now that it's complete, you know, kind of write the final sentence in, in, the, in what her career was. Sydney Moss is a winner. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You know, she's a great kid, and uh, all the pressure gets put on her of, of who she is and, and where she's from and what, what she's about and, and the way she carries herself on and off the court. You know, and if I could write it a little bit better, she would have shot, made a few more shots tonight, um, made a, a couple more threes, uh, made that little runner in the lane right there, and because she was frustrated with that part of it, but but she never stopped playing. I mean, almost a double double again this year. I mean, I know she had triple double last year in the championship, but you know, one rebound shot of a, a double double, I think, and you know, she's a winner, and, and we love her. Anything else for coach? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Congratulations.